Hello everyone and welcome back to Water Child Tarot. My name is Sarah. Today I'm going to be presenting you with uh, three decks by US Games and this is part two in a series that I'm not sure how long is uh, this will ultimately be um, but I wanted to compare decks that have imagery that differs from some of the most popular approaches to tarot um, in recent history. So decks that get away from the either the Marseille or the Waitsmith or the Crowley Harris imagery that um, most decks these days are sort of based on uh, or based around. And my last um, grouping was uh, Spanish artists published by Fournier. So um, if you haven't seen that video, I'll link it below um, or put it in a playlist. But I thought that was an interesting look at how different um, sort of modern artists approach tarot. I wasn't sure at first which three decks I wanted to compare in this series. I wasn't sure I had quite as strong a theme um, as looking at modern Spanish artists was. But then it occurred to me that these three do have a solid theme. So in addition to being published by US Games, we also have decks that feature portraiture. And I'll talk about that in just a second. Um, but first, let me introduce these decks. So again, all published by US Games. This is the Cosmic Tarot by Norbert Loesch, originally published in the early 1980s. Next up, we have the Tarot of Mystical Moments by Katrin Maltstein, published in 2022. So this is a much more recent deck. And then another original 1980s creation, the Tarot of the Cat People by Karen Kokendall. Um, at first, I was going to do these two decks along with Tarot of the Sweet Twilight, which is actually published by Los Garabeo, because they all feature um, slightly uh, surreal or imaginative landscapes. Um, and I think that would have worked okay, but then I realized uh, this common thread among these three uh, was really about portraiture, and I thought that that was kind of a neat um, approach to this. Now, I think um, the way that I approach portraiture decks is kind of the way that some people like to read with animal decks. Um, portraiture gives you the energy of a character, and you can use your imagination or the guidebook, um, depending on how the guidebook is written, to figure out who these um, figures are, who these people are, uh, what their cultural influences are, what their uh, worldviews are like, and then that sort of influences your tarot reading potentially. Um, of course, you could read these in a number of ways, including uh, drawing lines back to your favorite system or using numerology or other things. But I think in terms of the visuals, which is what I want to focus on today, is um, there's this sense of who are these characters? Who are these people? Um, and here we get um, portraits that are different postures, poses, um, and groupings of these characters and either other people or objects that are very different from established systems. Um, you will see hints of uh, maybe Thoth or RWS here and there, but for the most part these decks um, kind of do their own thing. So uh, let's get into the flip through and then again what I'm going to do at the end of this is do a sample reading um, and then do that same reading with all three decks and see how the imagery compares. Um, so again these are the backs of the decks and I will briefly show the title cards of two of these. Um, my Terror of the Cat People is a secondhand copy, and so I did not get a title card with it. It just came with the 78 cards. It should have had, I think, a title card, because uh, every other US Games deck that I've seen has one. Um, so those are those. And like my last video, I'm going to try not to talk my way through this entire flip through. Um, you can pause at any time and compare the images. If I see something particularly interesting, uh, I will point it out. One note I'll make about the Cosmic Tarot is that uh, many of the models used are movie stars from the 40s, 50s, and 60s. Um, mostly European movie stars, although there's the occasional American. And I'm not sure who all of the people are. There's uh, several attempts online to pin down and argue um, who's who. 
Um, so I will put one of those um, sort of blog entries uh, below this video if you want to find out. I don't agree with the, the woman's um, choices on one card, and she doesn't have guesses for all of the cards, but, you know, it's a fair bit of um, kind of photographic comparison and research that you can go look at and see if you can recognize who the models are. Um, and then in the center deck, we do get some references here to Alice in Wonderland. And so um, those portraits of those characters may be familiar from that story. It's not really an Alice deck, but there's certainly some uh, visual cues that there was inspiration from those stories. Now on the right with the Tarot of the Cat People, you get a completely fictional anthropology and history of the different um, groups uh, political groups or cultural groups that are on this um, made up planet. And so I have not studied the Cat People book, um, which is called A Traveler's Report, and it talks about the culture um, that is on my list to do this year. So I'm sure that will give me more insight into the uh, character types that we have here. Um, but uh, in the meantime, you can just visually get a sense of of folks sort of based on their dress or you know the way that they're posed with their with their cats <laughs> I guess in this care of the cat people there's always cats in every picture I'm noticing that many of these uh, look like they're set at night, which is sort of interesting. Just noticed that uh, this card is called Rejuvenation, the Cat People card, and she's like coming out of this wave. You know, I was thinking like, oh, Rejuvenation, like you've had a spa day, and then these people <laughs> look like they're coming out of a mud bath or something. So, yeah, Rejuvenation. Definitely see some uh, Thoth influence in this card. So on the left, we not only get uh, actors and actresses, but we also get dancers.
And I will say that, um, you know, these kind of character built decks um, can be a little tricky for me to read with sometimes. I like the coloration, the poses, the expressions, and all of that, but when there's um, just really a focus on a single figure, uh, while I do like figures in my decks, what I really want is to see, see people actively doing things, and not always are, are they very active. Sometimes they're just, you know, standing with in a scene. Um, so that can be a little tricky for me, especially these more close-up portrait style cards like this one. They're beautiful, and I can read with these decks. I've, I've definitely done some great readings with the Cosmic Tarot and with the um, Tarot of Mystical Moments here. Um, I haven't tried out Cat People yet, um, but I feel I could, you know, I could do a reading with it. Um, but it's interesting just having this emphasis on like, who is this person? That's that's where my mind goes when I look at these kind of images. And so looking at character traits um, in that sense, it's not just the major arcana that are, you know, are archetypes or metaphors or whatever. It's all of the cards end up being these kind of um, archetypes. And so if they are archetypes, what do they represent? I like that all of the aces in uh, these two decks also feature characters. So instead of just fe featuring um, one of the implements or items, um, you do get characters in both of these decks as well for the aces. I'll also mention that the center deck um, here, the Tarot Mystical Moments, has alternate cards for the Emperor and the Four Kings. Originally they were all female figures, and then the author, um, when she released this, decided to add in uh, male options for all the five of those cards. What I've done here is I've chosen um, just my favorite ones, and that happened to work out to a male Emperor and two female and two male uh, kings, just based on the ways that the kings were depicted, not not what their um, gender expression was, but just what they were doing, how they were posed, what kind of setting they were in. So these are the ones that I like best.
was mentioning in my last video that I really look for something other than a stabbed heart in the Three of Swords. And while these two certainly um, stray in that direction, they have a different uh, overall look. It's not just a giant heart with three swords in it. So here we have a, uh, a rose on a grave. It looks like these people are in uh, dark suits, look like they're in mourning. And then we have three swords here. So this is some kind of memorial perhaps. Um, this person has their, their torsos made up of this rose shape and they have three arrows into where their heart uh, is and then they're, they're crying blood. Um, and then over here we just have these three swords, uh, two gripped by these characters and one on the ground. The cat's kind of snarling and they're not looking at each other. Um, so again, all three sort of give this hint of, you know, sadness or um some situation that's not going well some unhappiness um but at least the picture is more interesting And I like this Five of Swords a great deal um, in all three decks, again, because it's very different than the traditional um, two, peop two people having argued and one person sort of walking away. Um, this is, you know, each one of these is different uh, from each other and from that image.
All right, so as I did with my last video in this series, I'm going to shuffle one deck, pull some cards, and then we're gonna look at the same reading through the other two. I'm gonna start with the Cosmic Tarot first, so let me shuffle and I'll be right back. All right, so here's our draw. We have the Four of Swords, the Sun, and the Chariot. And again, we're looking here at the Cosmic Tarot by Norbert Loesch for our first reading. And I decided uh, before I drew the cards, I wanted this to be a reading about someone's relationship. And I was thinking maybe it's something where, you know, this person's been on a few dates uh, with a specific partner and or potential partner, and, you know, they, they think they're hitting it off. Um, but they'd like to know if this has a lot of, you know, potential to become something serious and committed. Um, it seems to be going well, but it's only been a few dates and they'd just like to know, you know, if they should proceed or if they're kind of wasting their time. Um, and what I get here with the Four of Swords is that they're just kind of hanging around, maybe both parties are sort of hanging around waiting to learn about the other person. Like they, they don't really know how to continue um, communicating. They've, they've kind of run out of things to say to each other or they've gotten to the point where they've used up all of their niceties and chit chat and the kind of introductory things that you might ask someone. And now is time to really show their true colors, um, to really expose themselves and to uh, not hide or not pretend uh, to be anything that they aren't. Um, not that they are pretending, but to really show their their full personality, I guess, is what I'm getting at here. Um, and only then um, can this move forward. And I think it will move forward in with you know some pretty good uh, momentum behind it um, if they can do this. But if not, then I think they're going to kind of sit in this somewhat stagnant state. Um, it's not a bad state. It's, it, you know, it seems comfortable. Everyone's just kind of hanging out. Um, but it's not really going to get more serious until they can kind of figure each other out on a deeper level and really get to know each other, who they are, what they want in life, and that kind of thing. All right, so here in our Tarot of Mystical Moments, we start out with a character who's super chill, relaxed, hanging out in her underwear, uh, you know, maybe taking a nap or something, or daydreaming. Um, which is fine, but in terms of uh, wondering about this relationship and the and the forward progress, um, I, I do get a sort of a similar read here, that there needs to be this unmasking uh, with the sun card. They're, they need to show the, their true selves to each other. And again, it's not about having um, withheld anything in a devious way, but simply that, you know, if it's only the third or fourth date, obviously they still don't know each other that well. And they just need to kind of continue to remove those la layers and peel that stuff back and uh, show each other who they really are um, through actions, uh, you know, not just through talking. Uh, maybe they've exhausted a lot of um, kind of conversation starters and, you know, that kind of getting to know you uh, first you know, few dates kind of stuff. Um, but moving past that, maybe they need to be more active and go do something together. And that that can then get them rolling down the road. Um, this, you know, chariot card in particular obviously suggests that the, this isn't going to be a fast um, moving situation, uh, but it could be steady. You know, it could be, it could be something that, again, like just pushes them down to the next uh, step and that they continue on um, from there. So, yeah, again, a pretty positive reading uh, with an emphasis here on the center card and with, uh, you know, revealing their their full personalities and potential to each other. So in our final reading, again, it's it's not intensely different, I would say, from the other two. Um, but here in this Four of Swords, you know, we've got someone who is entertaining their cats. They're just kind of hanging out. Maybe they're a little bit bored, but they're like, okay, you know, here, I'll throw the toy for you. And so I'm seeing this as kind of the two, the lovers in this situation, the potential uh, partners. And, you know, maybe they're, um, They've been enjoying kind of flirting and playing around with each other, you know, on the first few dates, getting to know each other on kind of a surface level, um, and that that kind of uh, playful interaction that can be very intriguing. But after a while, if there's no deeper connection, if there's no substance, then we're not going to be able to move forward. So going from this state of like casual flirtation and eh, yeah, let's just go get a beer 
and see what happens um, to this, you know, more committed um, idea of let's delve deeper. Uh, let's let's have some deeper conversations. Let's talk about uh, more of the things that we're looking for in the long term. Let's um, kind of again go do some things together, go do some activities together and see each other in different environments and see if that helps us make a deeper connection with each other. Um, connection through the fact that these two people are holding hands. And then uh, that could really set us up for, you know, a powerful um, next step in our relationship to really uh, take it to another level. Um, but again, if this personal connection isn't happening, I don't see this next step happening either. So a pretty straightforward reading and certainly, uh, you know, I appreciate the decks uh, when they kind of give me a real reading with a fake question, right? Like this makes sense in the context of any two people that have only been on a few dates together. What have we been doing while well, we've been flirting and talking and chatting and maybe texting or whatever else? We've been communicating, but not on a very deep level. We need to make a deeper connection in order to take this to the next step. Um, I don't think I'm like making a groundbreaking reading, but it's cool to see that the imagery uh, flows with that in each of these decks. So let me know what you thought of these. Uh, do you have any of these decks? Have you read with them? Do you like the way they read? Um, would you interpret these readings any other way? Uh, let me know any other things you, you thought of when you were looking at the imagery or when I was going through these readings. And uh, thank you again for being here. I have an idea for at least one more of these and maybe one or two more. So um, it's been really nice to do some comparative walkthroughs on my more modern decks. I've done a lot of stuff with historic decks and comparing uh, historic imagery and color choice and things like that but it's nice to bring out some of my more modern decks and have a play so thank you again for joining me with this and i'll see you again next time bye